Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. Today we're continuing the infamous Rise of the Robots campaign and we're only using Sparks plus psionically active soldiers as usual. Guys, it's time for another VIP mission. 11 enemies kind of tells me that there is a high chance that we're going to see the hunter in this mission. More than welcome to challenge him and we're going to have a nice a little royal rumble with him let's see whom we're taking on to this mission oh that looks like a pretty damn good team yeah we got still a lightly wounded templar so can't take him on to the mission so we're only taking storm with us Ranvin, Roby, the tech team of doom as i uh, am calling them going forward uh, joining us and we got three sparks by the way you see just how minimal the damage is although they take days and days and days to even repair but yeah overall it's actually quite minimal so we got plasma blaster uh, two heavy rocket launchers a shredder gun what else do we have theoretically yeah hellfire projector not worth it got two premium guns uh, we only got one blue screen rounds really so I'm wondering maybe we're adding another blue screen rounds here and we're just shifting the mimic beacon around it's not the end of the world I like the mine shield but we have plenty of psionically just completely immune characters although if we do have a sector, she's the counter to just run in. So mind shield it is, and that brings us down to one mimic beacon. Nah. First world problems, guys. As I'm finishing this here, we're uh, going to fight for another scientist and almost a hundred intel, which is perfectly fine. That is all we need in order to. We'll probably be peace most of the other regions. Let's rock and roll. All right, we just landed and the game gave us the high ground. See, the longer you play the game and the more you like the high ground, specifically if you're a YouTuber or a streamer, the game gives you more high ground. No, of course not, but uh, that's what I tend to believe because I'm getting a lot of high ground. Good, let's start. We're moving towards uh, the direction of our target. First pack is already spotted. That's where the dark VIP is at. This is where we need to go. Might as well, by the way, might as well use this here as an option to actually start with that pack. dangerous that down here this is easily um, a uh, spot out if you're not playing it carefully and i think i'm going to restart the, ge uh, the game because i can already see that there is uh, maybe we'll, we'll give it one more try i just don't want any loss of frames good Yeah, too many losses of frames. Okay, guys, I'll restart uh, real quick. Good, we're back in action. Specifically, when you're recording a couple of these sessions today, it seems uh, that XCOM has the tendency to just, yeah, soak up a lot of, um, a lot of random access memory, leaving you with the problem to deal with that by yourself. Yeah, it's slowing down quite a bit then. Okay, cool. Good. We have 12 rounds. I don't want to really overdo that in terms of using cooldowns. So how about we're slowly but surely just starting with getting that elite trooper down. There we go. Trooper dies.
thanks to the hunter ability, we get uh, maybe a few extra overward shots. That's perfect. That is absolutely fantastic. So this might trigger another pack. Do we really want to do that, Saiken? It's the age-old discussion. How fast do you want to proceed? Let's instead buckle up and get these fools down first. The Archon, usually protected by his massive, massive uh, defense, is taking pretty much the short end of the stick. Just out of curiosity, 65, 35, yeah, not good enough. I would like to use some domination. But yeah, not under these circumstances. Even soul fire doesn't really deal a lot of damage. <clears throat> it's uh, it's the unfortunate truth when you still have not upgraded your psionic amplifiers. Good storm should technically not trigger someone or something there we go and we indeed did not trigger anything perfect dagger up here continues his onslaught Almost killing the stun lancer. Very nice. The mechs are still packing a punch. Good. First round. And we can see there was a pack right here. First round, first pack is gone. Three down. Just a few more to go. Perfect, we just got rid of our own cover. Well, it stinks. Blade Storm on the other hand. Make short process of this guy. Wonderful, we know there is another pack over here. Glaive begins to slowly but surely move forward. Not triggering them, much to my surprise. And you know what? Why not? Let's use this opportunity just to, you know, get a little bit closer, get that fire line going. We have plenty of time. We already killed the pack basically in the first round. So we moved and killed them. Even better. We're overwatching. Overwatching. Lots and lots and lots of overwatch. And let's do one reload for Dagger here. Just for good measure. And we're even getting a full overwatch trap off. The answer is no. But what we can get off is Movement request. high ground. There's another heavy mech right there. Just a moment. Good. Will do. Roby moves up there. Storm moves up here. Just gets the advanced auto loader. And we are moving 
our front line quite a bit. Just out of curiosity, we could hack uh, this here. Look at that. I mean, we now almost got a 50-50 chance. <clears throat> the tech score is still low, but uh, the drone gives a lot of bonuses. We're going to do that in a second. No need to rush it now. Instead, we're going to overwatch, like I mentioned. Okay. Moving. Moving up, still in the hopes of getting a clear sight on these guys. Very good. Can't fully hit them, but what we can do is we can certainly overdrive. First of all, get rid of the overwatch. Wow, that was a 95% shot that he missed. Too bad. Have to deal with the cover and make it rain. This might trigger another pack, I'm totally fine with it. This one is uniquely graceful compared Ooh. to the other species we've seen. It also gives off very strong psionic reading. Ooh, okay. Let's see, what else can we do? On approach. Mech moves up. Can't really hit them with the rocket launcher. I hate using overdrive just to get into position. That's oh, always a bit of a waste, to be honest. Moving. Buckle up and bam. Oh, it's another really, really nice hit. I wish Void Rift would deal just a tiny bit more damage. If you say so. All right, let's try to dominate this guy here. That worked well. Got a living mimic beacon down there. We're a team working. Finishing that mech, just for good measure. And it is time to deal with uh, the remaining mutants. Nice, we got a good promotion, uh, that's fantastic. Uh, we can only inspire, that stinks. I, I was hoping that we could inspire a storm here. Okay, 
You know what? Let's position ourselves here. I think that is in inspiration range. Perfect. We can now inspire. Saving a mimic beacon. Let's use a couple of the abilities that we're not using that often. Oh, it's pretty damn good. Um, yeah, I'd... the alternative was uh, to use Vault and just shock him. Given that the Gatekeeper might come down, we're just gonna go into full cover um, so that we're completely out of the vision range that forces the Gatekeeper to come closer, technically. Apparently it does not do it. Okay, moving up. Totally okay with uh, triggering these guys. We could even hit the Archon, that is fantastic. We could move all the way up to here and start getting down the Archon, and why not? I see no harm in doing that. Still it still has its absolute garbage dodge. Let's start hacking here. Income plus 25 is probably not what we need, but we need the alien facility even less. Now available. Okay, so moving up. Next turn we can get on top of the roof. On, the on top of uh, the roof of this car, of course, that is. Let's move all the way to here. I want to say relatively close to the mind control. I'm not sure if they still have that in the game or if it had been patched out in War of the Chosen, but in classical XCOM, the further you had been away to, uh, from your mind control target, the higher the chance that it would break. It's probably taken out by now. here will be overwatches life can hit both not the worst idea we're probably not going to require that anytime soon and that's a long throw Apparently so long that the animation didn't hold up, but yeah. Alright, that's what I want to see. Good job, keep it going.
This poor fellow doesn't really know what to do. Ah, that. Well, that was actually quite okay. He only reanimated two soldiers. Well, that was good. Let's burn this guy. This here will shred. On top of uh, setting him on fire. Fantastic. That's exactly what I was looking for. Overdrive. Gatekeeper gets heavily, heavily shredded. And I'll take two shots with 64%. Enemy armor intact. Imminent reload required. Very nice. Before we go further in, let's just double check we can find the sectoid. Yep, he's standing right there, so we'll keep our Templar as a backup. I guess that'll be okay. Moving up, Void Rift very much would hit him. Might as well do that, why not? Moving up. Let's hit the gatekeeper. I apologize for your untimely death. That kills all of the zombies and this here deals with the sectoid. Okie dokie, that is an easy mission so far, but a fun one nonetheless. It really worked out super well for us. So where is the exit zone? Right over there, cool. Very good. Movement, movement, even more movement. And we're positioning ourselves here. What are our chances to hack? Soldier gains complete immunity. None of that is really helpful. And there are no more enemies on the field, so... Okay, moving over here. Movement request confirmed. We still got six rounds left over. I will comply. Moving to high ground and since we have Blade Storm might as well just stand there to be honest. We 
know, it's a good time to say goodbye to this poor fellow here. Very good. That prevents any potential problems with uh, mind control breaking. And let's see what is going to drop down. I can promise you they will not survive unless everybody just misses their overwatch shots. Unlikely though. They just so happen to drop in the middle of the Templar, who is pretty pissed about that. Good. First guy goes into sustenance. Second one is just taking a beating. Third one is shredded and can now continue with his undying loyalty yeah told you they wouldn't survive Good. Psy Zombie takes a shot. So much for his undying loyalty. Unfortunately, we can't kill the guy in sustenance. It's just not possible. Moving back, and Roby can already start to go to here. Storm moves over here. And as long as he's not just starting with uh, stasis, nope, that will be his death. But of course, they take every chance to be just a bit annoying. So let's all agree, it is not surprising that this guy is also blessed with an undying loyalty. Advancing. Good, finally. I guess be okay. Everyone can advance to the extraction point. Got it, moving. Tracking route to target. Okay, and finally we're getting out of here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I like that combination also. Not sure if I like the two Templars or um, and two mechs or one Templar and three mechs more. The Templar really is pretty straight self-sustaining. I don't know if it is such a great class to have two of them. No. And we have landed, so let's take a look. Vector finally gets uh, the ultimate promotion to champion. Sacrifice generates a protective field which redirects any attack against allies inside it towards you. Gains bonus defense and armor while active. Not a bad thing for a tank or an over. Releases a uh, blast of energy damaging all nearby units. This attack has no cost or cooldown, but uh, consecutive Novos uh, will damage the spark. I like the Nova one a lot uh, if you're doing it once. I don't remember the exact damage but uh, since he's a fire support I'm not 100% sure 
if he will be standing in the middle of enemies that often. Sacrifice on the other hand with the protective field can be turned on and turned off and you even get a defense bonus and armor so there's nothing wrong with taking that as well. I would say for now I would like to probably go with sacrifice 20 to armor has two, uh, three turns cooldown and I think it has it's a free action I would you know what let's take it and we'll check it out haven't used it that often I'm going to be totally honest usually the game is over before your spark is uh, fully leveled and we got another scientist plus intel good that sounds pretty uh, decent There's even more intel because the game wants us to continue making contact and we shall comply. Just need some more contacts, that's the problem. But Covert Ops missions could help us with that. 143 intel, holy shite. That is a lot. Okay, now the not so relevant autopsies, but still could trigger a research breakthrough. Good, and we wanted to go with training center right here. Building that one up. How many engineers do we have? We have one engineer available, that's not too bad. Let's think about it. We're putting one down here that frees up that extra required uh, power that we do have as a, as a resistance order so at the end of this month we can put another resistance order in its place the templars are doing well also so captain and major slowly but surely getting uh, to that high level and very soon we're ready to go and get the assassin down. Yeah, okay, cool. Proving Grounds projects uh, will be reduced by 20%. I don't know. So unfortunately, it does not re uh, reduce the amount of cores that we need. And is there really so much that we would want to create? We got plenty of alloys and delirium at this point. Not the greatest breakthrough. Let's go with the Basically. shield bra uh, shield uh, bearer autopsy. Because I also don't want to drag this for uh drag this out for too long we finally got the stronghold ready and i can tell you what's gonna happen very soon good we either get another engineer which we probably don't need we could use another resistance contact however so we're probably going to do this i like the idea of getting the chosen here's a breakthrough research Wow, yeah, no, we don't need excavation projects. We also don't need the reduction of the avatar progress. Not at this point. We got access to many, many facilities. So let's get that extra resistance contact uh, going. Hogbite is running the show as always and his l loyal companion Raul is helping him with that. Seven days and we're good. And I think that brings us to the end of uh, this episode because I can tell you I am incredibly motivated to dismantle Mrs. Nightwitch. That's probably the next thing that we're doing. It's a fight against uh, the assassin, which is going to be fun, with three 
of our mechs it should be yeah over rather soon shall we say but yeah let's say um let's do that in the next mission guys if you enjoy the content uh, keep in mind that there's always the opportunity to hit that nice like button and also write a couple of comments down below it helps the channel to grow and uh, gives back if you enjoy the content take care and have a great one we see each other in two days bye bye